Hi everyone. So let's start type of matrices. Okay. This is just one another topic that we have. Let's see that how many like there, there could be many type of matrices that are defined, but uh, these are few popular matrices that we have. And among those also, like I have put the most popular in the you know, I mean you can say it is it is the order of popularity, which means identity matrices, lower triangle, upper triangle, diagonal symmetric, squishy symmetric, orthogonal. These are uh, like a bit more popular, and these are less popular. Adam potent, nil potent, inverterly like this. Okay. So in most of the cases, if this is some new term, maybe item potent, nil potent like this, they will define it right, right there. That uh, what do they mean by item potent? I mean, they do not want to check your memory, like whether you do you remember the definition or not. So generally for the diagonal symmetric, SQ symmetric and till orthogonal, they may not define it that what is that? Okay. Otherwise they will give you the definition in, in most of the cases. If they are saying some other, other type of matrices, you do not need to remember the definitions. They will give you the definition. Okay. But yeah, identity matrix, lower triangle, upper triangle, they might not give you. Okay. So identity matrix is a matrix that is having ones on the principal diagonal. So it is a square matrix. First of all, a square matrix means number of rows and number of columns are equal. This is n cross n matrix, which is a square matrix. And on the main diagonal, main diagonal means where a i j, if you are having a i j, then i equal to j. Since it is a square matrix, then uh, main diagonal is, is, is this one, this one, this one, this one. So it is one cross one, two cross two, three cross three like that. So this is identity matrix and everywhere else is zero. Okay. You, you might already be knowing this, obviously. Now, inverse of a matrix that you already know, which is this. Let's suppose that A and B both are square matrices. These are defined for the square matrices only. And we say that A and B are inverse of each other if and only if A, B and B are equal, that are equal to identity matrix. Okay. So you, you cannot just say that A, B equal to identity matrix. A, B and B both should be identity matrix. I mean, if you're saying A, B is identity matrix, it is just as good as saying that, that B is just a right inverse of A or something like this. Okay. You should be having left and right inverse. Then only you can call it inverse. And anyway, like for the square matrices, uh, this always happens. I mean, I'm not going to prove it. Uh, there is a proof, I think. But for the square matrices, if A, B, for, for just for the square matrices, I mean, the inverse is defined for the square matrices, I agree. But uh, for the square matrices, if A, B is equal to identity, then automatically B is equal to identity, which means for the square matrices, actually left and right inverse both are same. Anyway, like that's not important. So, but A, B and B, A for the square matrices, both are actually just, uh, if A, B is identity, then it is as good as saying B is also identity. You do not need to prove it, but yeah, there must be a proof. Yeah. Should we, uh, should we try proving, <clears throat> try proving it that AB and BA both are same for the <laughs> square matrices or we can skip it. Let's just skip it. Okay. It is not okay. Okay. Now, uh, I mean, uh, you, you can try proving it. It is not very hard, but, uh, you, you, if you want, you can try it. Okay. Maybe, maybe let me do it. I'm not sure. I think BA, let's suppose, I, let me just try it. Okay. I'm not sure if I will be able to do it. Pardon me if I'm not able to do it. I, I do not recall it uh, right away. But if AB equal to IN and then I want to prove BA is equal to I. Okay. Maybe I think we start with B. And B into I equal to B into A into B. And then this is B. A. Do you see any progress from here? That is given that A, B is I. And from this. No, uh, that is not okay. I think. Yeah. So instead of I, we have put this A, B, okay? because A, B is I that is given to us. And then, okay, then you can also say B, A. I think from here we can do something. Maybe from these two, 
with these two are equal, then you can say B minus B A into B equal to zero. Okay. Or maybe uh, let me write B A into B minus B equal to zero. I mean, both are same, but let me write in this way. Okay. And then maybe you can take B common. This is B A minus identity into B equal to zero. And then from here, I want to prove that B A minus identity is actually zero so that I can prove that B A is equal to identity. That's what I want to prove, right? So what can I say from here? How can I guarantee? Okay, uh, first of all, tell me if two matrices multiplication, which is uh, maybe uh, C, D or something, let's suppose C into D equal to zero. Does this mean that C equal to zero, D equal to zero? Does this mean that P equal to zero or D equal to zero? No, right? Reason being is that like uh, you can have two non-zero matrices and multiplication of them could be zero. Maybe, maybe something like this. <clears throat> zero. No, it will not be zero. Um, can you tell me some example? Maybe let me say. One, one. Minus one. Minus one. Okay. If you add these two columns, you should be getting zero. Right. And similarly, let me know. I think this will work. So basically, these are two non-zero matrices, and and if you if you multiply two non-zero matrices, you you are getting a zero matrix. So if C D equal to zero, then this does not mean that C equal to zero, D equal to zero. Okay. How C is zero, Yuras? C is non-zero matrix. Don't don't go for determinant or these kind of thing. This is a matrix, okay, which is a non-zero matrix. It is non-zero matrix and it is also non zero matrix hmm. actually proof goes on the similar lines if i remember uh, but from here how can i argue that uh, this has to be zero Okay, let's not worry about it. Actually, I already told you that I do not remember it. Okay. So anyway, so anyway, like for the square matrices, if uh, if a b equal to identity, then uh, then for the square matrices only, identity matrix means like uh, identity matrix. These are defined for the square matrices, but uh, for some uh, non-square matrix also, let's suppose a and b are non-square matrices. Then also you can have finally a square matrix, right? I mean, A, let's suppose 5 cross 4 and B could be 4 cross 5. Then also you can have a identity matrix, which is a square matrix. So basically for non-square matrices A and B also, you can have identity matrix. That's not a, that's not a problem. But for those inverse are not defined. I mean, uh, not the complete inverse is defined. Okay. For non-square matrices also, you can have identity, but the inverse is actually not uh, defined there. But anyway, so for if A, B is equal to identity, then B is also identity for the square matrices. Okay. Now let's talk about the properties of inverses. So the first property is that if you take the inverse of a matrix uh, A again, then you will be getting the same matrix. Okay. I will not prove it. Obviously, I will not prove small, small things. So that is okay. If you have a constant A and if you take the inverse, then that constant will get uh, divided. Okay. Which means that K A inverse is basically one upon K A inverse. Okay. And if you have a b inverse, then you can write it as b inverse a inverse. Okay. Now let's talk about the transpose of a matrix. Transpose of a matrix is, is very easy. It could be square matrix, could be non-square matrix. It is saying that you just you know interchange a i j with a j i, a j i, which means if it is one uh, like if it is first row you just write it in first column if it is second row write it in the second column 
So if it is first row, first column like this, first uh, second row, second column, third row, third column, like that you need to write. You know that how to take the transpose. Okay. Then these are a few properties of the transpose that if you take a transpose of a matrix again, I mean two times, you will be getting the same matrix. That's very easy to see. And this, there's a second property which says that if you add or subtract two matrices, take the transpose that is as good as this A transpose plus B transpose. Okay. If you add, if you are adding them. And for the multiplication, it reverses the order, which means AB transpose is B transpose A transpose. And if it is constant, then you can take the constant out and dot product, you know that you can write in the matrix format, which is a, which is a, uh, a transpose B. Now there is last property, which is quite important and not very intuitive, which is saying that if you're having transposure inverse, then it is your choice. You are taking the transpose first or inverse first, does not matter, which means that A transpose a transpose inverse equal to a inverse transpose, which means if, if there is a matrix A, then you can take the transpose then inverse, or you can take the inverse then transpose. Both are same. Okay. Now, suppose I want to prove this. Can anyone tell me how to, how to go about proving it? So I want to prove that a transpose inverse is equal to this. Maybe, maybe let me, let me try it. Maybe let me say that it is a inverse transpose, basically a inverse transpose into um, a transpose, maybe left or right does not matter. You can multiply anywhere equal to identity. Okay. Yes, I, you know, uh, I, I multiplied by a transpose both sides, left side, right side does not matter. Okay. Maybe left side, right side, because I know that if uh, for the square matrices that you know, right? If AB is identity, then for the square matrices, I, like if these are all are like I'm dealing with the square matrices, suppose for now, then I mean, uh, here in this case, see, uh, if the inverse exists, first of all, then it is for the square matrices only. Okay. So we are dealing with the square matrices in particular, in, in particularly in this case. So if AB equal to identity, then I know that B is also identity. Anyway, so let's just try proving it. That I want to prove this. Want to prove this? I just rewritten this in this form, but I want to prove this. Maybe let me try. Can anyone? Can anyone check this? I think it is easy to prove, right? How? Can you? Can you just combine these two transposes? Can you just uh, combine B transpose A transpose to something? I know that you are you are more habitual of this, but uh, but I think we can combine right. We can combine to um, B transpose A transpose to A B transpose. So here you can write it in this way: A into A inverse transpose, which is just identity, right? This is identity and identity transpose is just identity. Okay. Anyway, you can prove it very easily. You just multiply by A first, uh, A transpose first. Left right does not matter, and then uh, you you just call up this. Okay. right? So if you multiply the left, then also identity, multiply the right, then also identity. I mean, does not matter. Basically, uh, these two are actually same. I mean, for the square matrices, if you can prove one of them to be identity, then you can, uh, you do not need to prove other. Okay. You just prove to be one because if, if A into B is identity, then B into is also identity for the square matrices. Okay. Uh, now there is a definition of triangular matrices. I mean, these are just small, small definitions. So that's why we are doing it. Okay. No, we just started up us. Okay. Don't worry. So triangular matrix is a square matrix, which is either a lower triangle or upper triangle. It depends on that. Uh, where are you, have, where you are having zeros. Since it is a square matrix, you can say that this is a diagonal. Okay. And above the diagonal, if you are having zeros, or or you can say that on the diagonal or the below the diagonal, if there are the, there are non zeros, then this is a lower triangle. So better way to say is that if above the diagonal, if there are zeros, these must be zeros. For the lower triangle, these must be zeros. Similarly, for upper triangle, like below the triangle, these must be zeros. Now tell me if this is upper triangle or lower triangle.
this is both right i mean upper triangle says that this should be zeros lower triangle uh, so lower triangle says this should be zeros upper triangle says this should be zeros that's all in the definition you do not have any other condition so since these both are zeros you can say it is both and what about this matrix this is upper triangle or lower triangle so upper triangle says that uh, these should be zeros lower triangle says that these should be zeros it does not say anything about uh, other other elements so these could be non zero or zero so that is why it is also both see lower triangle if all the elements above its main diagonal are zero it just says that these elements should be zero does not say anything about these elements or these elements so that's why like uh, those uh, those are both upper and lower triangle so in in terms of mathematics maybe you can say if aij for aij equal to uh, maybe equal to zero for i greater than j right then this is lower triangle or something like this okay now let's move to the next thing let's see if these are true or false the transpose of lower triangle matrix is upper triangle what is the principal diagonal you ask me no principal diagonal see these are uh, these are the square matrices but principal diagonal is defined like this for the principal diagonal you should be having i equal to j for any matrix you can have the principal diagonal maybe square maybe rectangle but these elements where i equal to j is there it is called principal diagonal for the main diagonal okay or it could be anything yeah it could be anything zeros or non zeros so it just says that if i is greater than 0 which means these elements are zeros otherwise it just says that these elements are zeros the transpose of a lower triangle matrix is upper triangle tell me if this is true i think this is true reason being is that see transpose does what see uh, let's suppose let me go to that page only transpose does what it basically uh, you know have some uh, flip uh, across the diagonal which means it just flips these elements here these elements here it does this so yes if you are flipping these two elements then yes you will be getting this so transpose of lower triangle is upper triangle then this is true and upper triangle transpose is lower triangle this is also true let's check this product of two lower triangle matrices is a lower triangle tell me about the third one product of two lower triangle matrices is a lower triangle let's just check it product of two lower triangle matrices maybe it is zero uh, a1 ab let me just say abcd or uh, maybe a11 uh, a12 A two one, A two two, A three one, A three two, A three three. Okay, this is a lower triangle matrix. Similarly, you will be having a lower triangle matrix here. And if you multiply those matrices, maybe let me have B one one zero zero, B two one, B two two zero, B three one, B three two, and B three three. If you multiply, then let's just check. Uh, what's going to happen? The first column that you are going to have here. is basically a linear combination of these columns so you will be having non zero here non zero here non zero here because linear combination of these columns the second column will be linear combination of these column but you are not taking this column you are not taking this column linear combination of these two columns only i mean you are not taking this column if you are taking linear combination of these these two columns it will be definitely zero okay it could be non zero non zero and for the third column you are not taking this you are not taking this you are just taking linear multiple of this so this is zero this is zero this could be non zero so yes this is lower right so product of two lower triangle matrices will be lower okay ye samajh mein aa gaya right and now what is the fourth question fourth question is saying the product of two upper triangle matrices is upper triangle let's just check i think we can check it easily if if two lower triangle matrices is lower then let me just put a transpose okay if you put the transpose then this will be upper i mean uh, it, this will go this side and let's suppose this is ab it will be b transpose but it will be upper 
because i know the transpose of lower is upper this will be upper this will be this will be b transpose this will be a transpose and then this will be upper so i can say that product of two upper upper triangular is also upper okay so yeah this is also true okay so what is a diagonal matrix you uh, you all got uh, earlier points right what is a diagonal matrix a diagonal matrix in which the entries outside the main diagonal are zero which means that if this is main diagonal then outside of these main diagonals all the entries are zeros or what is a main diagonal main diagonal or principal diagonal is a diagonal where you are having for aij i equal to j this is called main diagonal which means this is main diagonal this is i equal to j this is main diagonal and similarly this is also main diagonal and these all all are diagonal matrices okay diagonal matrix is basically a matrix where the apart from the diagonal main diagonal you have everything else is zero now what is a symmetric matrix a symmetric matrix is a square matrix that is uh, that is equal to its own uh, transpose which means a transpose and a both are equal okay this is called symmetric matrix what is a skew symmetric matrix like for example you can you, you can just say that see uh, if you just take the transpose then seven will be here so mm, you can you can just try taking the transpose maybe let me just take the transpose 1737457350 as you can see transpose and a both are same so that's why it is a symmetric matrix yeah this is only defined for the square matrices okay symmetric matrices are only defined for the square matrices now uh, as you can see that uh, a and a transpose both are same and that is why it is a symmetric matrix okay i mean even when i was writing this a transpose i know since it is a symmetric matrix i just copied this i mean i have not taken the transpose i mean you might be thinking that i am taking the transpose but actually i have not taken the transpose i just copied it and then i said like okay a and a transpose both are same a yeah, diagonal matrix could be a non non square or maybe a rectangle matrix also but where the diagonal entries should be non zeros i mean uh, apart from the diagonal entries everything should be zeros and for the diagonal entries you can have you can have anything okay diagonal entries could also be zero but apart from the diagonal entry you you should be having the zeros skew symmetric matrix is a matrix where if you take the transpose you you will get minus of that now that matrix which means if you take the transpose of this matrix probably then you will be getting minus of that matrix you can just try it a transpose will be 0 minus 2 45 2 04 minus 45 minus 4 and 0 which means that a transpose and a are related by minus symbol this is called skew symmetric matrix now tell me uh, like these diagonal elements when we take the transpose that does the diagonal elements move anywhere when we take the transpose no right it remains same so basically if there is any matrix then then if i take the transpose of it then diagonal elements are not changing i mean diagonal elements are same so whatever changes here and there but the diagonal elements are same i mean these elements come here and these elements come here that's okay but the diagonal elements remain same now tell me if this is symmetric matrix since the diagonal elements remain same it could be anything i mean uh, positive negative does not matter it could be anything basically for the symmetric matrix doesn't matter but for the skew symmetric matrix since i am saying that this let's suppose i take the transpose and th this are related like this which means that if you take the transpose of this then for the diagonal also i mean you you are putting the minus but the diagonal are same so suppose it is 2 then how can it be minus 2 i mean it, it has to be a minus 2 for the skew symmetric it has to be a minus 2 so how can it be a minus 2 it is not possible right you are getting my point that see if it is 2 then to make it skew symmetric or to have it skew symmetric you must be having the minus of this i mean every every of uh, this is basically uh, getting multiplied by minus 1 every of the uh, the entry so since it is not possible that is why you will be having zeros here on which okay see here you are having zeros only for the skew symmetric matrix this diagonal element will be zero Re reason being is that this is equal to minus of uh, like uh, this transpose is equal to minus of its own but if you take the transpose and if you put the minus then you cannot have any non zero here 
right? You must be having zeros here. So for the SQ symmetric matrix, diagonal will be zero. I hope you are getting right. So if you take the transpose and then you put the minus of this, then diagonal element won't change. Diagonal elements are just fixed here. If diagonal elements are fixed here, and if you if you are saying that it's, it's it is equal to its own minus, then it is not possible. It has to be zero, right? Okay. So for any, let's just see this. For any matrix A, both A A transpose and A transpose A are symmetric. Can you prove this? That A A transpose is symmetric. I think it is easy. How to prove anything is symmetric? We will take that matrix. We will put the transpose and we will just prove that it is its own matrix. So this is to be proved. This is just a mathematical de definition of this English sentence. Now I think you can take this transpose, which is just A into A transpose. So there is nothing to be proved, right? Yeah, yeah, so much. Similarly, you can prove the later part, which is A transpose. So you can easily prove this. So now the second point is saying for any square matrix A with real numbers, real entries, A plus A transpose is symmetric and A minus A transpose is symmetric. So if you want to prove that for any matrix, A plus A transpose is symmetric, then what you need to do? You basically in terms of mathematics, you need to prove like this. This is to be proved. Can you prove this? I think uh, for A plus B, you can apply the formula A plus B transpose equal to A transpose plus B transpose. So which means you can easily prove this, right? A transpose plus B transpose. Similarly, let's just prove the second one, which is A minus A transpose is skew symmetric. So you do you want to do this as in homework? It is easy. Basically, in mathematics, in terms of mathematics, I want to prove this. So you can prove this, okay? You can prove this as in homework. This is to be proved. Okay. So this is done. Okay. Now they are saying show that for any square matrix A can be as, uh, can be expressed as summation of symmetric matrices and the skew symmetric matrix. So if there is an A which is square matrix that can be represented as summation of is symmetric and skew symmetric matrix. This is symmetric. This is skew symmetric. Can you represent? I think we can represent. How? Like for A, I have A plus A transpose is symmetric. That's what we have just proved. A minus A transpose is symmetric. So I can represent A like this. This will get cancelled out. Okay, this is 2A. So I think, let me just divide by 2. So I can represent A like this, which means I can just rewrite this A as 1 upon 2 A plus A transpose plus A minus A transpose. I can, I can just rewrite this A like this. Okay, this is just rewritten. And I can say that this is symmetric. This is skew symmetric. Okay. So for any matrix A, you can write it in the form of symmetric and skew symmetric. Any square matrix basically. Because symmetric and skew symmetric are related to square matrices only. Okay. I mean, if it is a square matrix, then, then only you can talk about A equal to A transpose. Because otherwise the dimension itself will, will be different if it is not a square matrix. Right? If it, if it is not a square matrix, then you cannot have a symmetricity because the dimension itself will, will not match A of A and A transpose. Okay. They are saying so that if A inverse exists, it is symmetric if and only if A is symmetric. A inverse is symmetric. They are saying A inverse is symmetric if and only if A is symmetric. Which means they are saying that given that A inverse transpose, A inverse transpose equal to um, A inverse, then it is possible only when A transpose equal to A inverse, uh, A or vice versa. Can you just try doing it? Just see if you can do it, okay? 
I mean, we are not in hurry. Let, let's just spend uh, proper time in uh, understanding these kind of things. Let's just try improving it. If you're done, just write done. Okay, just write done in the comment box. If anyone is done. Otherwise, we will just move in just one minute. Okay, so should I do it? Okay, Yuvraj has some answer. I think it is correct. Yeah, so we can do it like this. Let me let me just uh, try doing it. So maybe uh, maybe let me let me say that given that let me say that this way. Okay, which means given that a transpose equal to a, I want to prove this. Which means I want to prove a inverse transpose equal to a inverse. I mean, we need to prove both ways, but let's just have this way first, which means a transpose a, a it is given to me, which means a symmetric that is given to me. And then I want to prove whether a inverse is symmetric. So it is given that a symmetric. One second, let me connect my charges. And I want to prove A inverse is symmetric. So let's just see, which means A transpose equal to 8 is given to me. Okay, I will take this as a given thing. Now uh, to prove that A inverse is symmetric, I think I need to do this. And then I can just rewrite it like this. And since this A transpose is just A, because it is given to me. So A inverse is just A. Okay. It is given to me. So you can say that yes, if uh, if A is symmetric, then A inverse is symmetric. Now let's just prove other way, which means if A inverse is symmetric, then a is symmetric which means it is given to me then i will take this as a given thing and i will prove that a is symmetric so let me do what let me put the inverse both side which means if two matrices are equal then there must the inverse also must must be equal right let me put the inverse both side and putting the inverse Okay. Then I can take this minus and T uh, flip. I can flip this minus and T, which means I can flip this minus and T. And then I can say this is, uh, uh, this is given to me as A inverse, right? I mean, this is by the flip. And then this is given to me as A inverse, which is A, as good as A inverse. Okay. We can prove it. In fact, like if you prove one of the way, you do not need to prove other way. Basically, these are the mathematical uh, math mathematical quantities. If you if you just let's suppose if you prove one way, which means you are proving a symmetric, then a inverse is symmetric. Then uh, then you you are getting the final result that okay you have proved you, you like if, at this point you have proved right. Then basically, if you just notice, then other way is just a reverse of what what we are doing here. See here, we got this. This is this is the first thing that we got here. This is the last thing that we got here, and then. From here, we have, uh, you know, from transpose to inverse, we, we like, I mean, from inverse to transpose, we went from transpose to inverse. Here, we are going from inverse to transpose. So basically, whatever we do here, I'm just, I'm just, uh, you know, repeating the things. I'm just going in the reverse. So for mathematical equations, I mean, it is always the by implication. See, it is always like this. I mean, if you can write this, then you can write this. If you can write this, then you can write this. So basically, if you're proving in one way for mathematical uh, equations, then it is already in other way. These are always by implications. Okay. I mean, I do not want to confuse you, but for the mathematical equations, it is always the other way. Uh, you are proving in one way, you are basically saying both, both are equal, both are equal. It, it is as good as saying this, it is as good as saying this. So if you want to prove some other way, you can just uh, reverse the steps. Okay. I will show you in maybe some uh, some other example also. Maybe you will be you will be convinced. Let's not worry about it. Okay. You can prove in both the ways. It's not uh, that tough. 
सो ठीक है यू डू नॉट नीड टू रिमेम्बर दीज थिंग्स यू आई एम जस्ट टेलिंग यू एज एन एग्जाम्पल एज ए क्वेश्चन जस्ट फॉर द सेक ऑफ प्रैक्टिस यू डू नॉट नीड टू रिमेम्बर एनी थिंग ओके Let's just solve this. They are saying if A and B are symmetric matrices, then A B A is. Can you tell me quickly? A B A is which kind of matrix? Symmetric, square symmetric, diagonal. Let's just check A B A transpose. If A B and symmetric matrices means A transpose equal to A and B transpose equal to B, that is given to me. It is given thing. And let's just check this. it will be a transpose b transpose a transpose and since it is a b a that's why it is also equal to its own transpose so that is why it is a symmetric matrix theek okay? hai i hope you got it okay theek okay. hai now there is a uh, definition of orthogonal matrix which says that our square matrix is orthogonal if its rows and columns are orthogonal vectors whose rows columns and rows are orthogonal vectors which means that uh, okay let me first define the orthogonal vectors one second this is ortho this is ortho normal vectors okay so they are saying that a matrix is orthogonal this is orthogonal if there are uh, there are columns and rows are orthonormal vectors so let me let me tell you what does this mean what is orthonormal vector let me first define it orthogonal vectors first let me define what is orthogonal vectors a and b are called orthogonal if a dot b equal to 0 very simple which means if you uh, if you have a dot product between a and b you will be getting zero the, this is called orthogonal vectors do you remember the dot product formula so i mean a dot b was a transpose b theek okay? hai and uh, maybe if you if you remember it from your high school then i have not told this i think but you can write it like this into b into cos theta like if you remember the dot product formula from the high school so if it is if theta is 90 degree which means if this is orthonormal 90 degree then a dot b is actually zero yeah a dot b is actually zero if it is if theta is 90 degree theek okay? hai so this is called orthogonal vectors now there is a definition of orthonormal vectors also orthonormal it is just saying that it is orthogonal plus like two vectors are orthogonal plus they are they are unit vectors also unit vectors this okay this double line is called norm norm of a vector so basically uh, length of the vector you can say length okay length you know how to calculate the length a1 square plus a2 square like this right plus a3 square okay so orthogonal you you got it right so a and b are called orthogonal if this is the thing this is called orthogonal and uh, and they are also called orthonormal if they are unit vectors which means length of a is one and length of b is one if they are unit vectors also a and b are unit vectors if these two combines which means if it is if it is uh, perpendicular to each other ortho orthogonal and unit vectors these two combines we call orthonormal okay orthonormal is vectors is nothing but orthogonal plus unit vector theek okay? hai now a matrix is called orthogonal only for the matrix we do not use orthonormal term this orthonormal term is only for the vectors for the matrix i i say orthogonal
if let's suppose this is uh, this is q where you are having these vectors v1 v2 v3 like this then i i say this is a orthogonal if b1 is b if bi into vj equal to 0 and any of this vi equal to 1 which means these vectors are orthonormal this vi is orthonormal which means a unit vector which are perpendicular to each other so this matrix is called orthogonal now for example let's suppose this is the matrix q that i have and now this is v1 this is v2 this is v3 then can you tell me what will the q transpose it will be i mean this vector v1 will come here v1 transpose this v2 will come here this v3 will come here okay and these are only for the square matrices this is a square matrix okay so these are just square matrices okay now can you tell me what is q transpose q which means if you just multiply this v1 transpose v2 transpose v3 transpose with this v1 v2 v3 then what will the answer you multiply this row with this column you will be getting one because that's how they are defined okay i mean if you uh, if if uh, if the length of the vector is one then if you if you just uh, take the dot product of that vector itself so b1 dot b1 will be uh, length of b1 square basically this is the formula that we have basically b1 dot b1 will be uh, like if you go with uh, the formula probably a dot b cos theta also then it is b1 and into b1 length into cos 0 cos 0 just 1 so basically it is length of b1 square cos 0 length of b1 square and if b1 is uh, length of b1 square is uh, is 1 if b1 is a unit vector so which means that here you will be having 1 reason being is b1 is a orthonormal vectors basically these set of vectors are ortho uh, normal vectors that is why you are having 1 and then here what you will be having if, if you multiply this b1 transpose and b2 if these are orthonormal vectors then these are perpendicular that is why you will be having 0 then again 0 like similarly you will be having a identity matrix so basically if this is orthogonal matrix then if you multiply q transpose into q then you will be getting identity matrix okay q transpose into q is identity matrix if q is orthogonal matrix i mean this is just a definition and since these are square matrices so that is why if a into b is identity that is why uh, b into a is also identity which means q into q transpose is also identity basically you can in fact you can write in one one line q transpose into q equal to q into q transpose equal to identity for orthogonal matrices see for the orthogonal matrices you have q transpose into k q which is equal to q into q transpose equal to identity this is just a definition of orthogonal matrices okay now if this is clear then please tell me that can i say that if q into q transpose equal to q transpose into q equal to identity then can i say the q trans q transpose is same as q inverse q transpose is same as q inverse why because you can just multiply q inverse in both side and you will be having q transpose is same because this is something that is making you i mean both are inverse of each other which means this is something that is making you identity so if you if you ask me that what is the inverse uh, inverse of this q transpose then i will say no uh, one second yeah that is true yeah if i ask you that what is inverse of this q then you will say it is just q transpose because it is what that is making you identity inverse of this q is just q transpose okay so anyway you can also multiply so from this equation you can also multiply q transpose both side this is q into q transpose equal to identity you can also multiply q uh, q inverse both side and then you will be getting 
this is q transpose equal to q inverse okay q inverse post multiply pre multiply maybe obviously dimension and everything should match then only you should be able to multiply okay so for the orthogonal matrices this holds and by consequence this also holds which means like orthogonal matrices are basically very very nice matrices and uh, for those matrices inverse is very easy you just take the transpose of that now do you know that symmetric matrices has uh, has all eigen values as linearly independent and in fact orthogonal right so what we do we basically we have these symmetric matrices and then uh, we put all the eigen vectors of the symmetric matrices into a uh, into a matrix okay let's suppose this is one eigen vector and since i know that everything is perpendicular to everything one eigen vector another eigen vector since i know these set of vectors are orthogonal then what i do i just divide with the length also which means i just divide this column with uh, with the length of the first so so that i can make the length uh, this length as one so ultimately actually we make it orthogonal which means we make it a unit vector also once we make it a unit vector then we call this matrix as um, as a orthogonal matrix and these matrices are very convenient to us in machine learning so symmetric matrices are very useful reason being is that that give us some matrix which is following the orthogonal property i mean that give us the eigen vectors which follows the if you put the eigen vectors in the in the in some matrix then this give us orthogonal matrix okay and basically if you remember i said diagonalization one thing diagonalization right so diagonalization is a concept of this only i mean diagonal, uh, diagonalization related to symmetric matrix and orthogonal in these things everything is very much related in linear algebra so once you study the linear, linear algebra is master's level you will be really enjoying the things okay so uh, there is another matrix the definition is idempotent matrix it says that if a square is equal to a then we call this matrix as idempotent matrix which means if you multiply the matrix by itself we get the same matrix so let's just see if this is true or false a matrix is idempotent then you can say a power n also i mean this is given to us that matrix is item potent, which means a square is equal to a. Then can you say that any power is also equal to a? Just check it. You can say, right? Reason being is that you just multiply by a both sides, you will be getting a cube and then equal to a square if you multiply by a. And then since if this a square is also a, so you are getting a cube as a. So similarly, you will be having a, a power 4 as a, a power 4 as a. So for any, any power a, you will be getting a power n as a. So that's why this is true. Okay. Let's just see if this is true or false. Okay. They are saying show that. So if a b equal to a and b a equal to b. Then show that a, b and a and b are idempotent. Idempotent means a is square equal to a and b is square equal to b. They are saying if a b equal to a and b equal to b, then I need to show this. Okay. So let me start with a square that is a into a. And let me write one of the a is a b. Okay, because it is given to me. Okay. And then A. From here, can I proceed anything? B A as B. A B as A is given to me. So I started with A square. I want a see I, I want to start with a square and ultimately I want a and what can I use in between is this a b equal to a and b a equal to b so I want to start with a square I want to ultimately get a I want to get rid of uh, this a b um, this b is b Can anyone help me? Yeah, B is B. 
then it will be just a b okay yeah a b is it yeah a b is given to me as it so this b a is is b because i can use now uh, this is given to me that this b a is b right this b a is b this is also given and then this a b will be finally a because it is given to me okay so i can say that a square and a both are equal which means i started with a square and in between i have used this and this and then finally i was able to prove that this is nothing but a so it means that if these two are true then a is idempotent let's just check for b also i think you can do it can you do it quickly for b just try doing it you can write b as one of the b as ba which one you will prefer left one or right one i think let's let me prefer prefer the left one so that i can have ab form right i can have ab and ab is a so it is, it is a and then this ba is again b okay so that's how we can prove it anyway like you need to just pro see that how we can prove it and like they may ask these kind of questions also if in the true false whether it is true or false okay yes akash that is correct you were able to do it right okay if a b equal to a and b equal to b then so that okay this is just a proof that we have we already proved it let's see this consider matrix a and suppose a inverse exists then they are saying that how many such matrices possible of size 3 cross 3 which are idempotent and invertible invertible means a inverse so basically they are saying that a square equal to a then how for how many such matrices this is true let's just see this so it means a square minus a equal to 0 it means if you take a common a minus i i equal to 0 and this means that a minus i equal to 0 why because a inverse exist right if a inverse exist then i can say a minus i equal to 0 you know they are saying a inverse exist if a inverse exist i can say a minus i equal to 0 that a equal to i theek hai so for how many matrices that is possible to have uh, that that is invertible and idempotent of 3 cross 3 or any any size just one matrix which is identity just one matrix for how many matrices just one matrix there is just one solution of this equation okay uh, i was able to do from here to here because a inverse exist okay let's just see this they are saying let's suppose b is this then show that b is idempotent i think you can do it as a number b is square equal to b that that's what you need to prove okay and this is 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 1 by 2 and this is same thing 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 1 by 2 you can just check Uh, that one by two into this and minus one by two, and you will be having again the same thing. You can just do it as in homework. Okay. Now there is another definition that is involutory matrix. An involutory matrix is a square matrix again. Then an involutory matrix is a square matrix that it is its own inverse, which means a square equal to identity, which means a and a inverse are basically same. Okay. so that is called involutory matrix that if you if you if you want to find the a inverse it is just a you do not need to do anything very nice right so it is called involutory matrix which is basically a square equal to identity identity means a into a equal to identity which means a if you ask me what is the inverse of a it is just a okay let's just see if it is true or false if a square matrix is orthogonal as well as symmetric then it's involutory true it is orthogonal means uh, can you recall the property of orthogonal a into a transpose equal to identity right which means a transpose equal to a inverse as well as symmetric can you recall the property of symmetric a equal to a transpose i think from both of this i can say a a is on inverse right a equal to a inverse yeah so i can see that a is square equal to identity 
ठीक है सो दिस इज बेसिकली ट्रू यू जस्ट नीड टू अप्लाई द प्रॉपर्टी दैट सोल ओके दिस इज जस्ट अ नॉर्मल मैथमेटिक्स यू जस्ट नीड टू अप्लाई फ्यू प्रॉपर्टी हेयर एंड देयर एंड यू विल बी गेटिंग द आंसर लेट जस्ट सी दिस If A and B are two involutory matrix which commute with each other, which means A B and B are same, then A B are all A B is also involutory, which means they are saying that A is invol uh, involutory matrix, which means A square is equal to identity, B is also involutory matrix, which means B square equal to identity, and A B and B are same. Okay, they have given um, this information to us, and then they want to prove that. A B square is identity, right? They are, they have given this. Can you just try proving it? Maybe I think it is easy. Just just write me done once you are done. Try this. It is easy. Okay. Done. Your uh, is done. Okay. So A B, you can just rewrite it. A B into A B. and then you can say like you want to prove that to be identity then you can say that uh, this one of the ab let me write it ba so this is ab into ba and then this is b square theek okay? hai this is b square which is identity so you can say this is as good as saying i mean this this was as good as saying this and this is as good as saying a into identity into a which is uh, a square which is again identity so you can easily prove this theek okay? hai that is easy okay ek tar nakas both are done theek okay? hai now let's uh, show this if a is n cross n matrix and a is involutory then we need to prove if that is possible if and only if a plus i by 2 is adam potent uh, what was the adam potent i think a square equal to a na adam potent is a square equal to a And inverter is uh, a square equal to identity, right? I hope it, these are the right definitions. Yeah, okay. Now they are saying that a is inverter, which means I want to prove that a square equal to identity. If and only if, if and only if, a plus i by two square equal to a plus i by two. Hmm. Let's just prove this, okay? Let's just prove uh, this direction first, which means uh, let's say that a square is identity. Then this happens. Let's just try proving it. Let me write LHS, which is a plus i square by two, which is uh, okay. This is by four basically, which is uh, a plus i into a plus i. From this, I want to prove a plus i by two square equal to a plus i by two. ठीक है? So let me just write this LHS, which is a plus i into a plus i by four, and that is equal to a square plus a plus a plus i by four. And this a square I can use this as identity, so it will be identity plus two i two a plus identity divided by four, which is a plus i by two. Okay, so yeah, I think it is easy. So we can prove easily. Yes, one is done. Okay, so I think we can prove easily that given given this, then we can we can prove that this is the case. Now tell me, given this is the case, can you prove like this? so what we can do so what i want to prove i want to prove in reverse way i'm just checking whether uh, like i should be able to do it by this only i mean from here i should be just reversing the step let me just check it a plus uh, i by 2 you got my point right uh, given this i want to prove this so
Okay. Veer, which direction you uh, you are done? Reverse direction also. Can anyone try reverse direction? Should be easy only. I'm just trying uh, try to figure out whether it is just rewriting the steps. Okay, you started with the reverse only. Actually, I do not want to prove the reverse direction. That is the thing. I just want to uh, see from here. It should be it should be from here only. I mean, one of the way could be like uh, this is the uh, this is the thing like that. That's what we already know. Let me go to the next page. See, that's what we already know, and we want to prove this, right? So what can I do? I can just rewrite this LHS and RHS, uh, something like this. See, uh, maybe I can just rewrite this RHS as this because, because these two are same. So here I do not need any assumption. See, just one second. Actually in mathematics, like you do not need a two page identity. That's what, that's what I want to show. So you can. You just rewrite this maybe see this rhs is just this and here i do not need any any assumption tell me do i need any assumption to go from here to here just rewriting the rhs no right i, I i'm just uh, i'm just uh, just doing plus minus i do not need any assumption here now similarly i can just open this up and i can write like write this like this you know do I need any assumption to go from here to here? Do I need any assumption uh, from here to here or here to here? No, right? There, I, I do not need anything. It is just the plus minus. Yes. So now if, and since it is given to me that these two are equal. So let me just say that four, four get cancel out. I, I will get to zero. And then uh, this is two A. This will be zero. And then A square equal to I. Right. I mean, from here only, like somehow we are going, going some, some reverse from here and some, maybe some reverse and forward. Basically the common meeting point should be where, wherever we are using the property. See the point here, I am using the property, right? A square equal to I. When I, when I went from here to here, this is the point where I'm using the property that A square equal to I. So basically when we are doing the reverse, you can do the reverse till this point and maybe till this point. And then you can, you, you can say that, okay, since you have used the property, these two must be same. Basically the meeting point will be the, will be the point where we have used the property. I mean, uh, it's okay. Like if, if you are not getting this, like, I just want to show you that, uh, in mathematics, you do not need uh, the by implications. You just need one, one implication and another implication is by default. Okay. Anyway, like let's move to another thing. So you, you, you got it right. Otherwise maybe, maybe there must be some other way to prove it also. Mm, like uh, maybe we can open this up and then I think, yeah, I think that is the way you can open this up. And then you, if you try to cancel out, then you will be getting a square equal to I only. Okay. Yeah. But uh, you do not need to prove in two ways. That's what I want to, I want to say. See here also. Uh, they have not proved in two ways. They have just proven in one way. Okay. This is just a proof. Okay. So let's see this. A is involuntary matrix. If, then every integer of A is involuntary, which means if A square is equal to identity, then every integer power, which means A power Q is also, okay. A power, uh, A power N, A power K is involuntary matrix. Which means what? A power k is involuntary matrix means what? Can anyone tell me? It means what? Ki A power k is identity. Is this correct? Tell me. If I say that A power k is involuntary matrix, should I be saying A power k is identity? No, right? I should be saying A power k square is identity. I mean, they are saying that every integer power of A, which means A power k is identity. So A power k square is identity. Now, can I just write it a power k then square as same as a square power k or maybe, uh, maybe you can also write it a power 2k. So basically it is a power k into a power k, which is a power 2k. Now, if you have the C, uh, I have told it, uh, I think in multiple times. Now, if you have the brackets, let's suppose this is some scalar a power b power c. If you have the brackets here, 
then it is as good as saying a power c then then you can change these and then you can have a power bc also so it does not matter if you have the brackets then things are fine a power cb or something like this but if you do not have the brackets which means if you if you say something like this then this is not equal to a power bc or something like this okay if you do not have the bracket then it means that brackets are by default by default the brackets uh, they should be the right associative which means this is b power c first you need to do b power c then you will be doing a power but here the things are different okay so if you are having the bracket of this then you can just multiply the powers that's not a problem then in that case so basically you can interchange this or you can multiply the power so here you can just interchange this a, a square power k equal to identity which is i power k equal to identity which is actually identity okay so we can easily prove it okay now let's see one more definition which is null potent matrix a null potent matrix is a square matrix n such that n power k equal to 0 which means uh, like here k is any positive integer for sorry for some positive integer which means there exists a positive integer there exists a k such that n power k is equal to 0 okay if that is the case then it is called null potent matrix see again you do not need to remember the definitions they will give the definitions unless and otherwise it is very very easy uh, like which means symmetric is symmetric or maybe uh, orthogonal and uh, identity matrix lower triangle upper triangle unless and unless if they talk about uh, maybe item potent uh, nil potent uh, involuntary matrix or something like this then they will give the definition most probably okay you do not need to remember it let's just uh, have this definition in place and let's just see some uh, examples probably Okay, I do not have example here, but uh, I hope you got it. See, uh, if you are having any matrix, if you're taking like there is some power that exists that after that the, the matrix is certainly zero, then it is called nil, nil potent matrix. Maybe I can have some example. Okay, I do not remember any example currently, but yeah, but I hope you got the definition. Okay, these are, these are just small small definitions. Now let's see Hermitian matrix. A Hermitian matrix is basically uh, dealing with the complex numbers. So first, let me define something called co conjugate transpose. Then I will come back to this definition. A conjugate transpose that we also represent as a power theta, or some people represent a power uh, h, or some people represent I think a star or a power theta. Anything is fine. Okay. Of a matrix is basically it is very easy you uh, you take the conjugate and you take the transpose which means that for any matrix a first you uh, if you want to find out a power theta then you take the conjugate of the matrix and then you take the transpose or maybe uh, does not matter you maybe take the transpose first and then conjugate it is called conjugate transpose which means taking the conjugate and transpose both okay conjugate and transpose you can see something like this like for example like if you want to find the p theta of this then can you take the conjugate of this and then transpose or maybe the transpose and then con conjugate does not matter so i think i think let me find out p conjugate first it is 1 plus iota 2 plus 3i 4 minus 2i minus 6 is this correct no why because for the real numbers you do not have minus symbol okay so it is 6 only now you take the transpose of this if you take the transpose of this then this will be 1 plus i, 2 plus 3i, 4 minus 2i and 6 and this is called conjugate transpose which means you have taken the conjugate and you have taken the transpose. So this is called conjugate transpose which is p theta some people represent p star maybe p power h or something like this. Okay? This is called conjugate transpose. Now suppose we want to calculate uh, calculate the conjugate transpose of the following matrix. Then what we do? We will be taking the transpose of the conjugate first. Does not matter. You take anything. You take the transpose of conjugate first. Then you uh, let's suppose you take the transpose. Then you conjugate it. Okay. You need to do both. That's called conjugate transpose. Okay. Okay. And Hermitian matrix is something which is same as its conjugate transpose. Okay. Which means so the conjugate transpose of the matrix yeah so here i think i have not written the definition but that is okay so hermitian matrix is same as it's or it's conjugate transpose do you remember the symmetric matrix
for the symmetric matrix, you have just transpose. I mean, A is equal to transpose. But for Hermitian matrix, if you take the conjugate and then if both are same, then it is also a, a, a Hermitian matrix. Okay. Now tell me a real matrix which is symmetric. A real matrix, a real symmetric matrix. Is Hermitian. Is this correct? See, if it is a real symmetric, which means A power transpose equal to A, and if it is real, then it means A conjugate equal to A also. Okay? If it is real, then for the Hermitian matrix, you will say that, okay, A, A power theta should be equal to A. A power theta means you take the transpose of this and then you take the conjugate and the transpose of this is just A. You take the conjugate, which will also be A. Yes. Then finally, A power theta is A. Right? You just proved it. So if it is a real symmetric matrix, then it is Hermitian. Okay. Let's see a few properties that uh, like it is just like a transpose that in case of transpose, what you do, you, uh, you take the transpose two times, you get the same matrix. Similarly, in case of conjugate transpose, theta is just a conjugate transpose. You take the conjugate transpose two times, you get the same matrix. A plus B whole transpose was, was A transpose B transpose like this. Similarly, here in the conjugate transpose, just like conjugate, uh, just like transpose, just like transpose, right? So everything is just like transpose apart from this. So here in the transpose, if I have K into A power transpose, something like this, then it is just K. You can take the K outside because uh, because the transpose of this scalar is just uh, is just uh, scalar, so it does not matter. But here, since you're taking the conjugate also, so you will take the conjugate transpose outside. Okay, you will take the conjugate transpose outside, but the uh, but the transpose is same, so the, it is just left with the conjugate. So basically, it is same as the transpose. It is just that you you do one more step, which is conjugate. Okay, so if you are having a scalar then you have to, if you're taking that outside, then you have to be careful. You will be taking the conjugate outside. You cannot take a normal outside. If it is a real number, then it will be obviously no, not a problem, but it could be a complex number in, in general. Okay. So the Hermitian matrix, here, this is the definition. It is defined like this is a complex square matrix that is equal to its own conjugate transpose. Okay. Conjugate transpose means you co take conjugate and transpose. Basically it is plus conjugate and transpose both. For example, this, let's just see this. If you take the conjugate and transpose both. Okay. Uh, maybe let me take the conjugate first. Then you will be having this matrix, which is this. Then probably let me write this plus, this will be plus, this will be plus, these will be minus, right? Yeah. Now, if you take the, uh, if you take the um, transpose of this, then it is nothing but a theta. So if you take the transpose of this, then you will be having the same matrix. Let me write this. Okay. So you will be getting the same matrix if you take the transpose again. You can just check it. See, A plus IB and A minus IB will get exchanged like this. Okay. I mean, you just need to write in 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 place of uh, this row, this row. You just need to write the column, or you just interchange row and column. Okay. So this is called Hermitian matrix. Very easy definition. Now let's just solve this question. The main diagonal values of Hermitian matrix are real. See, the diagonal values doesn't get changed, right? It is a square matrix, and diagonal values doesn't get changed. If you are saying that it is equal to its own conjugate, how can it be, it will be equal to its con own conjugate? Because after transpose, it won't get changed. It will be same. Then these values will be if this is a a plus ib, and then it will be a minus ib after the conjugate and transpose, right? If you take the conjugate and transpose of this matrix, then what will happen? That transpose won't do anything. I agree, but conjugate will do. Conjugate will make it a minus ib. Now, how can these two be equal? These two be equal only when B is zero, right? Only when B is zero. See, A plus IB equal to A minus IB. This is possible. Uh, you can say A K, get cancelled out. Two IB equal to zero and then B equal to zero. 
So you can say that main diagonal values of Hamiltonian matrix are real. So that is true. What about this? The product of two uh, Hamiltonian matrix A and B is Hamiltonian if and only if A B equal to B A. Okay, let's just see the product of two Hamiltonian matrices, which means they have given like this. Okay, these are Hamiltonian matrices, and then they are asking whether A B. Uh, a B is Hermitian, which means they are asking this. It is possible if and only if A B equal to B. Okay. Let's just try proving it. Let's let's just apply the property. So maybe I don't know. Maybe I can I can prove in any way. Maybe let me prove this way. Maybe okay. So which means given this. Which is a b equal to b a. Let me try proving this way. So I will start from this. I need a b, and in between I can use a b equal to b a, right? So let me go next page. I will start from a b power theta. Ultimately, I need to reach at a b, and then in between I can use a b equal to b a. Okay. So this thing is b theta a theta and then b theta a theta is b a because it is given that these are hermitian matrices okay it is given to me okay so and then b a equal to a b that is also given to me this 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 is equal this is equal from here to here it is given to me and then that's what we have proved that we have started from this we got a b so th that's the proof which means that if a b equal to b a then a b theta equal to a b can be proven other way also. Can be proven other way, which means if uh, uh, if a b uh, if a b theta equal to a b, then a b and b a both are same. Let's just see this. So what I need to do, I need to do a b and b a both are same. Given that a b theta is equal to a b, so a b theta. C A B theta equal to A B. Let me first uh, do the other way. I mean the first way, which means I have written this as B theta and A theta. I have written this as B A. I have written this A B. And then finally I proved it. Now I want to prove in other way, which means I want to prove that this is given to me. And I want to prove from here, I want to prove that A B and B are both are equal. So I think uh, where I have applied uh, applied the earlier thing, yeah, this thing. So maybe I can reverse the step. I can go from here to here. I can go from here to here because it is given, and then this is B A and B, B and A B both are equal, right? See, uh, like I want to prove given this, I want to prove this. So I think it is very easy. You just have this, you just have this, and B and A B both are equal. Actually, in mathematics, trust me, you just need to prove one way. Okay, you just need to prove one of the way. See, uh, if you are proving one of the way, then wherever it is a meeting point. See, here, here I have used that property. Wherever it is a meeting point, you just need to go till that point and everything will be proved uh, automatically. So you just need to prove one of the way. Maybe you just prove AB, AB theta equal to uh, AB, then automatically you have proved the other way. Okay. I think I made it complicated, but you can do it easily. So let's just do it. Uh, you, you, you can have it part one, part two. Which means you can have from here, you can go go to here. If from here, you can go to here. You can do it in two steps, no problem. But what I all I'm saying is that in mathematics, in these kind of equations, you just need to do one way. Okay, you do not need two ways. Okay, so this is the proof that we have. Now let's define another matrix. This is last matrix, and we are done with the syllabus, which is called skew Hamilton SQ Hermitian matrix. Which is basically, if you take the conjugate and transpose, you get minus a. It is just like a skew symmetric matrix. For example, for this matrix, if you take the uh, take the conjugate and then you take the transpose, you will be getting this matrix, which is minus of a. Okay. So now tell me if there is a matrix. If you take the transpose of this, then the diagonal entries won't change. So if it is a plus i b, if you take the transpose of this, then diagonal entries will be a plus i b, and if you take the conjugate of this, this will be a minus i b. And then they are saying that 
these two are related by minus symbol minus of this which means they are saying a plus ib should be equal to minus of a minus ib which means a plus ib equal to minus a plus ib so i think this will get cancelled out from here you are getting a equal to 0 which means that for the skew hermitian matrices the real entry which is a the real entry okay real entry is 0 so it is a pure imaginary okay which means you will be having a pure imaginary part in the diagonal and pure imaginary means you can have 0 you can have ib I mean, zero is also pure imaginary. Zero is pure real, pure imaginary, both. Okay, zero exists in both the places because A and B could be zero. So, in case of skew Hermitian, it it cannot be a mix of real and, and this kind of thing. It cannot have a real part. It will be pure imaginary, either in I form or zero. So, this is a skew Hermitian. Okay. So, let's just check whether this is true or false. They are saying all entries on the main diagonal of skew Hermitian matrix have to be pure imaginary. Yes, this is true. A is SQ Hermitian if and only if I is Hermitian. Can you just try proving it? Just check whether this is true or false. So A is SQ Hermitian. It means just, just do it one way. Okay. We do not need uh, two ways. A is SQ Hermitian, which means that A uh, theta equal to minus A. Then you, you need to check whether I is Hermitian or not. Given that, you need to check whether IA is Hermitian. I think you can do it easily. I mean, uh, they have used a star. So they have started with IS. And then if it is a star, you can take this I outside. But you have to be careful. You have to be writing minus A. Uh, do you remember that property? Z conjugate A theta. Right? You can take this I outside. But you have to have minus I. And then uh, maybe this uh, this is SQ Hermitian. That's why this is minus S. And then you can finally have this is IS. Okay. That's very easy to prove. So yeah, we can prove it. So basically we have started from IA. And then we we have proved basically IA theta equal to IE. IA, right? And in between, we have used some property of that, uh, that A is SQ, SQ Hermitian. But you can do it other way also, which means uh, given that uh, given that uh, this uh, this is SQ Hermitian, okay. I mean, sorry, given that this, you need to pro you can prove that A is SQ Hermitian. Can you prove using this line? Maybe you can you can go from here. You can go till this point, then uh, then from here you can go to the to this point, and this is the meeting point where you can say that see it is possible only when S star equal to minus S. You are getting my point, what I'm trying to say. I mean, if given this, you want to prove that, okay, S star or A star equal to minus A, then what you can do, you can just rewrite this, rewrite this like this, minus I A star. You can just rewrite this into minus I minus A. And then you can say it is possible only when A star is minus I. Basically, you just need to prove one, one way. Okay. I mean, uh, whatever is the meeting point, where, wherever you have applied the property, you just go, go from left and right till that, that point in the reverse way and you will be getting to your answer. Yeah, you never need to prove in reverse way. Okay. In mathematics, you never need to prove the reverse way. Trust me. I mean, wherever you apply the property at that meeting point, you can, you can say that, okay, we can prove in reverse way also. So yeah, that is all. Finally, we ended linear algebra. So it took uh, it took uh, some uh, longer than what I was expecting. I was not expecting uh, this nine or nine classes, right? I was not expecting nine ten classes. I was just expecting six seven classes. Maybe one two classes we have took took extra. Maybe just to build the foundation. By but I hope that everything will be worth. So thank you everyone. I hope you like the subject, and then we will be meeting for the probability tomorrow. Okay.